So well, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today as we honor Dean Julio Atino uh, as a recipient of the Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and Technology Education from the National Academy of Engineering. Uh, my name is Ken Perello, and I am chair of the McCormick Advisory Council. That may sound like a highfalutin title, but uh, we are very clear that we all work for Julio. Uh, <laughs> we, we're joined by many distinguished guests today, I, but I want to particularly thank uh, National Academy of Engineering President Dan Mote, Executive Officer Al Romig, and Russ Brown, who is the Operations Officer of the Bernard M. Gordon Trust, for joining us today. And of course, thank you to President Martin Shapiro, uh, Provost Dan Linzer, uh, and Executive Vice President Nim Chinia for joining us today alongside uh, many other Northwestern leadership team members, uh, trustees, and uh, uh, colleagues of mine from the McCormick Advisory Council. Uh, Julio is receiving the prize today for his whole brain engineering philosophy. If you've been part of the McCormick School of Engineering any time in the last decade, you've likely come in contact with some initiative that stems from this vision. At its core, whole brain engineering is a way of thinking. It's about using both sides of your brain, the analytical side and the creative side, to look at problems in a fresh way. It's about collaborating across disciplines, combining different ways of thinking to create new ideas. Uh, by teaching our students to do this, we can educate the leaders of tomorrow to solve some of our most pressing problems. To implement this vision, Julio strengthened an already strong left brain curriculum, so the hard math and the sciences that are non-negotiable, if you will, uh, for engineers. He combined it with specific areas aimed at fostering right brain skills, or in your case, right brain, on that side of the room, including design, entrepreneurship, leadership, and personal development. Julio often says that engineers used to be thought of in terms of what they made. Now they are thought of in terms of how they think. This is due in large part to Julio's work in reframing engineering. Engineers who were formerly thought of as number crunchers or bridge builders are now designers, entrepreneurs, and leaders. By augmenting their right brain skills, they have the ability to see the real problem behind the perceived problem, and when you think about the complexity of the pr problems facing us today, and the breadth of technologies and approaches, because it's not just about the technologies, and approaches available to address them, the notion of whole brain engineering could not be more relevant and more timely. And make no mistake here, this has not been just about redefining engineering in the context of McCormick, but really setting a new bar for the profession, if you will. Uh, McCormick has developed a short video that encapsulates this vision. Let's take a look at that video now. It's form and function. It's being able to integrate things like music and art and engineering and the sciences. You have this very technical side, traditional engineering that's based on the math, the sciences, and you're bringing that together. Really at the intersection of, of both analysis as well as creativity. In between those two things is where the sweet spot for whole brain thinking is. We're really looking to create engineers that can think in a new way to be able to address problems that are the, at the crux of the world's problems today. Dean Atino is an accomplished painter uh, as well as a, a truly remarkable scientist and researcher. It was easy to see how this came out of him as uh, a, a vision for what should be guiding us in the business of engineering education. Gordon Prize is a huge deal. This is confirmation that the culture change that Dean Atino invested in was well worth it. The whole brain thinking at every scale and at every level has created a culture here at McCormick that is not only effective but also is spreading. He's galvanized this experience in, in many people and it's taken off. All the students, all of the, the faculty uh, that have come in recent years have embraced it and then, then just amplified it. Well, the core element is all the analytical thinking, logical, sequential, quantitative, rational. 
left brain skills for an engineer, they're not negotiable. Kind of have a toolkit and you're figuring out how do I use these tools to solve this problem. The best ideas in the future will require thinking that cannot be handled by just one side or the other one. Combining both the creative and analytical parts, understanding the human side of it, and bringing those together. Design, by its nature, connects you with people. We think of it as a process. I think it definitely just starts with listening, talking with the user, and understanding really what their needs are. You really have to put yourself in the shoes of the user. You want people who can ask the right kind of questions. You don't frame the problem correctly, you could be solving the wrong thing entirely. To craft ideas, to build prototypes, to put them back in the field, and to learn. Iteration is fundamental to learning. You're going to fail, and then you're going to learn from it. If you look out at some of the great entrepreneurs in, in this country, in this world, they have engineering backgrounds. So entrepreneurship started on the engineering side, and it has been embraced by many other academic areas. There's a certain audacity that goes along with deciding to build a new business, to create something new, to figure you have something to offer that's better than anything else out there. Leadership is a significant component of this. It's crucial to be able to uh, motivate people around you to buy into that vision. I don't see how you can pursue entrepreneurial activities without uh, being a leader. In order for students to be whole brain, you really need to understand who you are, how to manage yourself effectively, that type of skill that really is going to be essential for leadership. It's not all about design, it's not all about entrepreneurship, it's about how you bring those things together in a whole brain way. Whole brain thinking isn't really restricted to engineers. We want to somehow this permeate everywhere. Engineers don't necessarily have all of the answers. One of the hallmarks, if not the hallmark of Northwestern, is the interdisciplinary connections that exist. What you end up having is a whole brain organization to create and innovate at the intersections of fields. I can work with a biologist, I can work with a sociologist, I can work with an economist. I want to do theater and engineering. The world demands these kinds of thinking now. When we are desperate for new ideas that enable a better life, whole brain engineering helps deliver on that. I see what comes out of our students, their creativity, their willingness to tackle amazingly complicated, challenging problems, their commitment to make a difference in the world. You give people a lit match and they bring a forest fire. Marvelous. So to uh, further bring this concept to uh, life, we actually have an alumnus and a student here today who will tell, tell us about their whole brain experiences. So first, I'm pleased to welcome alumnus Mert Izzeri. Mert? Mert is one of our whole brain engineering stars. He's a student co-founder of Design for America, a national initiative that creates local and social impact through interdisciplinary design. That initiative has now spread to more than 35 campuses around the country. When he was still a student, Mert and fellow Design America co-founder Yuri Molina came up with the idea for SwipeSense, an affordable, data-driven hand hygiene platform for reducing hospital-acquired infections. It started as a Design for America project and then became a startup. Now the company has raised more than $12 million in funding, and Mert is the CEO. He's here to tell us today how whole brain engineering helped him propel his career. Please join me in welcoming Mert. Hello, everyone. My name is Mert, and I'm from Turkey. <laughs> Those were the first words I told Dino Tino <laughs> when I met him 10 years ago. And I think some of you in this room have heard that before from me. You see, when I came to Northwestern, I was a young and energized engineering student. But I was terrified. I was in this new country. And I met Dino Tino, and I have to say, I was fascinated by him. Here you had an executive definitely the CEO of the school, a scientist, you know, someone who actually does scholarly research, and an artist. And I actually really liked his paintings as well. It was really fascinating to me. I remember going back to Turkey in the winter break and telling my parents, you know, where else are you going to have the dean of the engineering school be a painter? This is America. You know, I, rem <laughs> I remember this justification. And I believe there's actually a fourth 
persona, persona for Dino Tino that often gets unsaid. And I believe the right way of describing him is an academic VC, an academic investor. You see, in my day job, I'm the CEO of a company called SwipeSense. And we're working on solving a nasty problem. It's this preventable medical error called hospital-acquired infections that kill over 100,000 Americans every year. We've actually raised $17 million, not 12. I think the bio was written a couple months ago. We raised $17 million. I'm now customers in 11 states. And some of our key customers have cut their infection rates in half. As a business, we have saved lives. And I couldn't be more excited. But this is not what SwipeSense looked like when Dina Tina first met me. This is what SwipeSense looked like when Dina Tina first met me. A very excited boy with his shoes untied. I just love this photo so much because it represents truly what the stage of our business was when Dino Tino first invested in SwipeSense. Um, you see, he's a very specific kind of investor. He's a seed stage investor. And every student, every idea for Dino Tino is a seed stage investment. He provides resources when you show more results. He makes unique connections and introductions that seemingly unrelated people that turn out to be brilliant. And he creates the environment that fosters these kinds of things where companies like SwipeSense isn't the exception, but the norm. And just like every great investor, he has a unique investment thesis. And that thesis is the great intersection. You see, ideas like short-term, long-term, art, science, right brain, left brain, these aren't opposing ideas that compete with each other. These are ideas that, in the intersection, bury the greatest opportunities that are worth investing in. You know, F. Scott Fitzgerald once said, the mark of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in your mind at the same time and retaining the ability to function. And boy, Dino Tino, has he functioned. <laughs> Not has he functioned, he's actually gifted this, I, this, uh, this notion that you could have whole brain engineering to not just myself, to thousands of students across the country and the ones who are in Northwest, who are privileged to be at Northwestern right now. Dino Tino, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for believing in a young boy who had nothing but opposing ideas and untied shoes. <laughs> and I want to congratulate you on your well-deserved award, and I cannot wait what the next decades, not the next years, but the next decades will bring to you and the larger Northwestern family. Thank you and congratulations. Well done, Mert. Um, now we'll hear from Rundy Roldan. And Wendy, tough, tough act to follow, but. <laughs> What, what, Wendy is a standout mechanical and engineering senior. Uh, Wendy's whole brain work extends to research and, and get, get the balance here between, between right and left brain. So she has conducted research in how to promote gender and ethnic e equity in maker spaces. But she's also helped to redesign a system that tests thousands of compounds rapidly to discover drug candidates that can protect neurons from traumatic brain, engine, uh, from dramatic brain injuries. So you've, you've got that yin and yang of the creative and the, and, the, and the analytical side, if you will. She's also been involved in several student groups across campus, including the Society of Women Engineers. Wendy will tell us about how whole brain engineering has impacted her education. Wendy? Follow. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Mr. Perello. And thank you for inviting me to speak about my engineering experience here at Northwestern. Um, my name is Wendy Rolden, and I'm a fourth year student here. I study mechanical engineering. I have a Siegel Design Certificate and English minor. I'm also the oldest of four girls, and I'm a first generation college student. I grew up on the north side of the city, and I first learned about engineering through an outreach program with a professor here in my high school. Um, I got the basic definition of what engineering was, using math and science to solve problems. After four years here, and thanks to Dino Tino's leadership, I'd like to add design to that definition of engineering that I had four years ago. 
Through the Siegel Design Certificate two-quarter capstone project, I was able to combine the technical knowledge that I gained in my mechanical engineering courses with the design expertise that I got through the Siegel Design Certificate. I worked with Dr. John Finan um, at the North Shore um, Research Institute, um, and we worked on, he had a well plate, um, 96 cells, and we worked to develop a three-step tension frame that would pre-tension the silicone to improve his research. Um, my teammates, Andy, Simon, and I have our project on display downstairs, if you'd like to stop by and check it out. Um, that was a two-quarter project where, again, we were really able to combine both the analytical and the technical. We went through, yeah, 50 iterations of different things. We built mock-ups, we tested with the user, and we were able to maintain his research legacy that Dr. John Finan has in his research lab while adding something that could improve his experience in his lab and for future research with traumatic brain injury. My research focus on makerspaces has helped me for prepare for my future um, endeavors in engineering academia. Tomorrow, I'll be flying out to Harvey Mudd to present my research in makerspaces that I've been able to develop over the past two years with Dr. Liz Gerber and my mentor, Julie, Hu, Julie Hui, in the Delta Lab. Um, I've, been using, I've been able to use mixed methods research data to understand the experiences and the lived experiences of females and particularly ethnic minority females in these makerspaces, which is something that I'm personally invested in, while also simultaneously being able to collect this analytical data to prove what we had been finding and we'll be presenting this um this weekend, so that's really exciting. Um, thanks to the support of Dr. Gerber, I've found my focus and my passion in design-based research, and I've also gotten to meet incredible people like Dr. Don Norman, who came to Delta Lab inside my book. The whole brain, <laughs> the whole brain engineering experience has also allowed me to fulfill an English minor. I came in, and in high school, you're told that you're this great person, and then I arrived, and I didn't understand parallel structure, I didn't understand grammar, really, um, so I took my first English course. I took Introduction to Frankenstein, um, and I loved those intro to I, I love those English classes. Um, I fulfilled a minor through our Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences that is really supplemented, and I've been able to translate the skills I learned in English, such as iteration and how your first draft isn't the last draft. Finally, the whole brain engineering experience has made has helped me understand the most of my Northwestern experience through leadership and personal development. Dean Holcreef introduced me to the concept of mindfulness and the theory behind fixed and growth mindset that has helped me thrive both inside and outside of the classroom here at Northwestern. Whole brain engineering has translated into other aspects of my life, such as running. I loved to run, but it was really hard for me to focus on one concept. So I've continued to run, but now I focus on my soul's hitting the ground, and that's been able to help me develop as a leader and also understand how I'm mindful in the classroom through my analytical courses. After graduation in two weeks, I'll be starting a PhD program in human-centered design and engineering at the University of Washington, and that's been thanks to the help of Northwestern's whole brain engineering program. During my career, I hope, to I hope to combine the fields of design thinking and influence the development of equitable engineering learning. Congratulations, Dino Tino, on this wonderful recognition and the work you have done to develop the guiding strategy of whole brain engineering at Northwestern that has helped so many students like myself combine our passions and create our own direction within engineering. Congratulations on receiving the 2017 Gordon Prize in Engineering and Technology Education. Thank you. When uh, our advisory council gets together, a regular feature are presentations by the students and the members of the advisory council learn to check their egos uh, at the door because uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a humbling experience. Uh, thank you very much, Wendy. Well done. I'd now like to welcome the president of the National Academy of Engineering, Dan Mote, uh, to say a few words and present the Gordon Prize. Dan? Well, thank you very much, Ken. Um, I really have enjoyed this so far, and it's just getting better all the time. Having your students come make presentations is, is always a winner. I know how this works. I've run universities. Getting the students, <laughs> getting, you, cannot, you just cannot uh, turn back the students. It's wonderful. And a, a great tribute to the prize and the growth of the prize and the expanse of the prize as well. It's tremendous. Um, my name is Dan Mode. I'm the president of the National Academy of Engineering, and uh, I'm very um, pleased and honored to be here to welcome the award winners and the, and the family and friends and, and colleagues in this, uh, and guests for this Gordon Prize ceremony. I'd also like to thank Northwestern University uh, President Morton Shapiro and Provost Daniel Linzer, who we've talked many times about, for most sincerely joining us at, here, but also for the support they have given this prize over, over a long period of time. 
I know they say they work for Julio, and that's probably true, but nonetheless, it's very unusual to have a, a provost uh, from biosciences uh, um, promote an engineering program of this scale so splendidly. I, 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 I feel compelled to say that because I've never found another example of this in the world, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so also we have here a member of the selection committee for this project, Jack, uh, Jack Linehan, who's a, a clinical professor of biomedical engineering here. Jack is located somewhere in here as well. And also the National Academy of Engineering Executive Officer, Al Romig, is here as well. And, um, and, the, uh, and also Alicia Leffler, you, you, you should get some credit here. Part of this prize is yours as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so it's, the, um, it's really my privilege this afternoon to present the NAE's, indeed the world's, most prestigious award in engineering education. It's the Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and, and Technology Education. This is the big one. Unfortunately, Bernie Gordon cannot be with us uh, uh, for this event. He's 90 years old and he's unable to make it. However, representing him in his absence is, is, is uh, Mr. M. Ross Brown, the operations officer of the BMG Charitable Trust along with his wife, Shelley. Thank you very much for coming to Massachusetts. <laughs> now, let's, let's take, a, take a moment to learn a little bit about this remarkable engineer behind this prize. I think we have a video on, on him. Uh, the button is hit. Good. The Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and Technology Education was inaugurated in 2002 by the National Academy of Engineering. The intent of the Gordon Prize is to recognize new modalities and experiments in education that develop effective engineering leaders. Now, for over 10 years, the Gordon Prize has recognized individuals that have innovated in areas such as curricular design, teaching methods, and technology-enabled learning that strengthen students' capabilities and desire to grow into leadership roles. The award was created to recognize professors, teachers, in technical institutions who understood that there was much more to engineering than learning theory, and that there was a need to inculcate, not in everyone, because that's not possible, uh, an attitude. Uh, there's an old phrase that it takes knowledge, skills, and attitude to be a successful engineer, let alone an engineering leader. This knowledge, skills, and attitude propelled Bernard M. Gordon to found or contribute to multiple companies and institutions throughout his long career, earning over 200 patents, being awarded the National Medal of Technology, being inducted to the National Academy of Engineering, among numerous other honors and awards, in general, embodying the very spirit of his namesake award. So this attitude is one, you don't get born with it, it's one that gets developed by your teachers, the successes of your jobs, your understanding that after a while you're, you're expected to do that. It, it, and it's a hard thing to put into words. Fostering these leadership skills in engineering is vital to making the profession personally rewarding, successful in the competitive marketplace, and enriching to society at large. The Gordon Prize recognizes educational efforts that cultivate this leadership. Both the National Academy of Engineering and I together recognized that the educational process in technology had changed so much over the past decades that there was now a dearth of engineering leaders. It does not take a large percentage of engineers to be leaders. 
it's about the, the same ratio as a platoon leader to a combat platoon. You know, one in 20. If you can get one in 20 engineers to have the capability, the desire, the will uh, to be the leader, you increase the productivity tremendously. It's not about academic achievement. It's about industrial, real world, turning out products that society needs that will enhance the economy of the United States. These leadership qualities are critical to America's competitiveness in the 21st century. The teachers and educational approaches that are recognized by the Gordon Prize are an immense service to the engineering community, to the engineer as an individual, and make the world a better place for all. So ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, would you please uh, welcome to the podium here Mr. Ross Brown and President Morton Shapiro, who will assist me in the presentation of the 2017 uh, Gordon Prize. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You, you just need to remain in the area. Don't, that, that's, that's, so you don't, that's so you don't escape before you have your role. <laughs> So before presenting the prize, allow me to say a few words about why this prize is so special. Uh, the recipients of this Gordon Prize receive one half million dollars in cash. Half of that uh, is uh, granted to the creator of the award, Julio in this particular case, and half is granted to the institution to support continued development, refinement, further dissemination of the innovation. The creator also receives a medallion and a certificate. But it's, a, it's both the institution is, a, is, is half the award winner and the creator is half the award winner. In addition, the creator is invited to present a public lecture on the prize-winning work during the annual meeting of the National Academy of Engineering in Washington, D.C. on Sunday, October the 8th this year. And now, this 2017 recipient of the Gordon M. Prize for Innovation in Engineering and Technology Education, of course, is Dr. Julio Otino. He's recognized for an educational paradigm that merges analytical, rational, left brain skills with creative, expansive, right brain skills to develop engineering leaders. Dr. Otino led the development of whole brain engineering at Northwestern University's McCormick School of Engineering, as you all know very well. A, a guiding strategy for the school whole brain engineering integrates the analytical and technical components of engineering with creativity, design, and divergent thinking through programs that span and connect students at both the undergraduate and the graduate levels. Under his guidance, uh, he's leveraged three areas that, to develop these whole brain engineers, design, entrepreneurship, and leadership and personal development. By augmenting existing programs and developing new initiatives to complement an already strong technical curriculum, the school provides a much improved student experience, prepares engineers to have a a much greater impact and imagine new possibilities and attracts more students into STEM fields. The school has developed collaborations with other schools and programs at Northwestern, increasing the centrality of engineering at the campus, which Provost Linzer has spoken about often. Many new courses bring together students from diverse disciplines and from participating institutions, such as the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And since making whole brain, brain engineering the cornerstone of Northwestern's engineering strategy, the number of women in the school has increased by 60% and emerging enroll and, and engineering enrollments are at an all-time high. So in addition to his role as Dean, Dean Otino is a distinguished Robert R. McCormick Institute professor, the Walter P. Murphy Professor of Chemical and Biological Engineering, and the Professor of Mechanical Engineering. It's kind of the academic equivalent of the, I guess, the, the trifecta, maybe the hat trick, and, 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 uh, and maybe the, I don't know, triple crown, something all wrapped into one person. <laughs> <laughs> he is the founder and former director of the Northwestern uh, Institute for Complex Systems and a member of the National Academy of Engineering, as you uh, may know, and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Please welcome Dr. Julio Otino.
So now uh, 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 Julio will make a few remarks. You ready? To remember my... So, uh, let me say first that receiving this award is an incredible honor and I share it with many, many people. So, whole brain engineering. So in situations like this, there is a temptation because to try to explain how the idea came about and to paraphrase someone famous, uh, Hermann Helmholtz, uh, Helmholtz, there is a tendency to describe a royal path that takes you to the concept, instead of a shaky ladder with all the failed attempts uh, or the other fellow who said something similar, uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein, a famous philosopher who happens to be someone who had the first degree in engineering, uh, when you reach the top, you kick the ladder, okay? And no one knows how you got there. You describe something <laughs> really great. Now, I, I am someone, and in those cases, people describe the things as epiphanies. Somehow the idea came. I don't believe in epiphanies, or at least I never had one. <laughs> I maybe have had two or three good ideas in my life. <laughs> but the way that I see the things happening is you have lots of imperfect, seemingly disconnected thoughts kind of moving up there. And if you are patient and stay with problems for a long, long time, you have to let the things kind of self-organize. And at some point, there is one missing piece that sort of completes a picture. The missing piece is not more special than the other pieces. And in this case, the missing piece was a name. The, when you actually put a name to things, people understand, and the name was whole brain engineering. Now, in retrospective, uh, what we tried to do was that we wanted the school to be more connected with other pieces of the university. And you can come up with processes and structures, but at the end of the day, people are the ones who make the connections. And of all the pieces to work with, the one with the fastest, shortest time scale of renewal were the undergraduates. And this is the piece that I mentioned in the video. You give a lit match and people come with a forest fire. But then you have to work with the graduate piece and faculty. And if I were uh, trying to summarize the, the, like the two or three components that make the structure of this is the first one, many of us grew in a time in which academia consisted of vertical integrated structures, departments, schools. So the first concept was to instill in people the sense that being part of a network was a valuable thing. Okay? The second one was something that is common in art, but not so much in engineering, is that in art you start by doing, as opposed to absorbing and then producing. And these two things combined with a targeted investment in collaborations, even if we had to subsidize them, we thought that we'll get value back. Those were the three elements that made up for the thing. Now, in retrospective, the creative and analytical, uh, Mert mentioned Scott Fitzgerald, uh, the ability of holding two opposing thoughts, is the mark of a first-rate intellect, uh, and he said, and that's 
really great if you can do that and still be able to function. And I wouldn't say function is the ability to thrive. And in some sense, this idea of holding two opposing thoughts at the same time, if I were kind of beautifying the explanation in here, I would advocate referring to someone like Niels Bohr, the, the fellow from quantum mechanics. Uh, Niels Bohr developed this concept of complementarity um, in quantum mechanics and applies to many things, but the most famous one is light. So what is light? Is light is a wave when it travels and is particles when interact with matter. And both descriptions are correct, self-contained, but mutually incompatible. It cannot be both at the same time, but that's what Niels Bohr said, it's both at the same time. So if you can um, sort of think of art and science not as opposing, or rationality and intuition as sort of obeying sort of this complementarity, you will be in good shape. So, So I need to thank lots of people for this. Um, and I'm fortunate that what I just explained is the view from 10,000 feet, which I can have because I'm the dean. But, <laughs> but this view rests on many, many, many components and programs. And many people on whose shoulders I rest to be able to have this view. So this is the part that I don't want to forget people, and I will be able to name only a fraction of these people. So for design, I want to thank Greg Holderfield, Bruce Ankeman, and Ed Colgate for the original vision of incorporating design in our curriculum. Uh, if anything, I was able to kind of expand it further, and for continuing to innovate every day. Uh, I benefited from many, many conversations with Walter Herbst and with people who are not here today, Don Norman and Bruce Mao. A big part of our design curriculum, the entry point for everything is DTC, formerly called EDC. And for that, I really have to thank Steve Carr, the late Ted Belichko, and Penny Hirsch. Another big part of our design efforts that was mentioned by Mert is Design for America. And for that, I thank Liz Gerber, also Mert and Yuri, and the people who follow them immediately, Hannah Chang and Aaron Horowitz. For entrepreneurship, I need to thank Mike Marasco and Mark Werworth for the leadership efforts in that area, and Joe Holtrieff for everything that has to do with the personal development side of leadership. Northwestern is a place that is full of good partners, people who have stretched me in multiple directions. Many of them are with us today, Lisa Corin from the Block Museum, and Sol Morrison from Weinberg, and Daniel Diermeyer from the University of Chicago. They expanded my thinking in multiple directions. And in this vein, I should thank also Mark Mills of Forbes, someone who I have exchanged view for many years. And actually, the very first version on, in writing about the idea of whole brain is something that I did with him. Many of the McCormick Advisory Council members represented here by Ken Porello have given me many hours and words of advice as we charter this path, and for that, I'm very grateful. I'm especially thankful to those MAC members, past and present, who travel here. There are at least four from California here today. I have been tremendously lucky to have an outstanding team working alongside me, and I want to thank many of those team members particularly Rich Lepto, Ajit Tamhani, Shou Chaufer, Alice Kelly, and Wes Berghardt. Finally, I have to thank my toughest critic, <laughs> my wife, Alicia, <laughs> who 
who, who keeps me grounded, humble, and for that you have to thank her, <laughs> and on my toes. And I have to conclude by thanking Morty Shapiro and Dan Linzer. They have been very big supporters of these ideas, as well as many other members of the Northwestern leadership team, and my fellow deans, for allowing me to follow on this vision, not only through McCormick, but also to spread through the university. Eventually, from one idea comes a network of ideas, and the network of ideas becomes a system, and the system eventually becomes a culture. I'm not going to be shy. The ultimate goal is to make Northwestern a whole brain organization, and I'm being helped with this by many people, including Morty and Dan now. Uh, I think that this is where we're going. Uh, I think the combination of analytical skills and creative skills could be our trademark. And this prize will allow me to keep plowing forward and to make that a reality. Thank you so much for bestowing on me the Gordon Prize for Engineering Education. Thank you. Well, well, Julio, um, you, you have um, you're very welcome to our family of Gordon Prize winners now, and and I thank you, congratulations on this, and thank you for all your work you've done on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, Julio, I know I speak for uh, all the uh, advisory council members in saying that this is a proud, proud day for us, and it is a privilege for us to be part of your team. Congratulations again to you. So thanks so much uh, to all of you for joining us. Uh, now I hope that you will uh, join us for a cocktail reception that will be on the ground floor. Uh, where a few of the whole brain engineering uh, student projects will be on display, and then we have dinner in the shop at 6. Thank you. <laughs>